All right, so why don't we uh, move into the, the final new area uh, which we, uh, so that you are very, very interested in and uh, the rest of us have had to become interested in very quickly <laughs> so that we can answer all the questions that have, have come up. So uh, this has been very exciting in the last uh, month or so uh, to, to understand what is happening with uh, measles uh, viral therapy. And this came from a report that was published in the uh, Mayo Clinic uh, Proceedings uh, and with uh, Stephen Russell as the first author, uh, but obviously involving the Mayo Clinic team. Uh, and uh, these results were focusing on uh, two uh, patients uh, with refractory uh, myeloma, seronegative uh, for the, the, uh, the uh, measles antibody, and treated with a very large uh, um, TCID dose, infectious units uh, dose of engineered uh, measles uh, virus. Uh, and uh, this, this is the story that uh, was very impactful uh, and that we saw around the globe of, of this uh, lady who had really a, a fantastic uh, uh, response with this, as they said, a massive blast of measles uh, vaccine uh, uh, wiping out her, her, her myeloma. Um, and so I, I thought it would be helpful uh, because we got so many uh, questions about this. And so one of the questions was, if this is a massive dose of measles virus, why don't you get a massive attack of measles? <laughs> and so the, the first part of that is that the starting point is it's an engineered uh, measles virus. Uh, and uh, it has been modified uh, by uh, growing in, uh, in uh, cancer cell culture. So it's become uh, modified and adapted to a cancer cell culture. And uh, that process has led to an adaption to uh, use CD46 for cell entry. And that fortunately, and we'll, we'll, we'll get comments on this, myeloma cells have uh, 10 times uh, more uh, CD46 receptors versus uh, normal cells. And so the answer to the question about getting a bad case of measles is that uh, the, you are using an attenuated strain. Uh, you are attacking a cell that has lots of uh, CD46 receptors versus normal cells. You also have uh, the normal situation where a normal person would actually have antibodies against the measles virus, whereas uh, myeloma patients, certainly ones in the trial, would be selected to have zero or very, very low uh, measles antibody. And then the final point is that within the cell, uh, there are normal defense mechanisms that would uh, eliminate entering viruses, uh, whereas in the myeloma cells, uh, this is uh, to some extent disabled. Uh, and the engineered virus lacks the C and the V proteins that would, would actually trigger that response. And so uh, th there are a lot of little details here that, that mean that you could have an impact on the myeloma and still survive. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a trial, uh, and it's interesting uh, certainly for me to know that uh, Stephen actually presented his early results at our um, uh, summit when, in London. And so this is a trial that's been going on for quite a number of years, since I think 2006, with uh, cohorts increasing over those years up to this final dose level. And so this top dose level uh, included those two seronegative patients. But this is a, if one considers it like a phase one trial, this is a phase one trial that's been going on for a considerable number of years, and has finally, uh, because of the concerns about safety, has reached this high dose, maybe not even the top dose. I think you can tell us uh, maybe if you plan to go higher. And that out of that, we have this uh, one lady who did have a CR at seven months, but unfortunately, a couple of months later, did have some reoccurrence of the plasma cytoma uh, in, in the skull area. And then a second patient who had definite uptake of the, of the measles virus, but really only had a transient uh, uh, response with this extramedullary plasma cytoma. And so uh, obviously these patients very, very carefully studied to show the improvement in the uh, plasma cytoma uh, with a PET CT uh, and uh, down to a, a very, very background uh, zero or very, very low level of uptake. Uh, and and uh, just to show the, the, the improvement over time, 
uh, with uh, the multiple lesions improving uh, May, July, September, December. Uh, so turning negative over time, uh, except for ultimately the reoccurrence in the, in the skull lesion. So what's next? I mean, the, the, the key point which, which you emphasize very, very clearly in the article is that this is a proof of principle that we have not seen before. Uh, we have seen a systemic impact from uh, IV administered engineered uh, virus, in this case a measles virus, which really did work. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, and so um, obviously we need more trials and maybe trials with uh, different viruses. So what do we think about all of this? <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Brian. That was, that was a fantastic explanation <laughs> of what we're doing. It was really good. So, and uh, you know, one, one thing I sort of uh, typically say about this because people sometimes get confused between the vaccine and what we're doing, and it is the vaccine lineage. You know, it's, um, it's a virus that's jumped onto a new receptor and now is, is serendipitously able to kill myeloma cells. But we're not using it as a vaccine. We're using it as an anti-cancer weapon. We're giving a massive intravenous dose, and the virus actually infects the tumor cells and kills them. And then the immune system comes in and mops up the residue afterwards. So, um, so what's next? Well, we, we're clear about two things from this trial. Um, you know, the first is, is it is a proof of concept. It's the first time anywhere ever that a patient with disseminated cancer has responded to intravenous delivery of a, an oncolytic virus. And this field has been in play for a long time, since the 1950s, actually when viruses were first isolated in cultured cells, people have been giving viruses to patients in clinical studies. So it, it's a proof of concept, but what we know from this study is we A, need a massive dose, and B, antibody is going to negate the activity of the virus. So what we're moving on to, and we've discussed this extensively internally at, at Mayo Clinic, is that we want to see whether we can really prove the single agent activity of this, um, of this virus. And so we're going to do a phase two study in patients who have um, IMID and proteasome, inhibit, uh, uh, proteasome inhibitor refractory myeloma who've either had a stem cell transplant or have had previous alkylator therapy. And they will be, um, they will be checked for measles antibody. They'll be negative by two different tests. And um, the trial will open in September. The reason for the delay is that the manufacturing is a real challenge. So we, um, we have to, uh, the, the manufacturing facility is at Mayo Clinic. Uh -huh. And we can go up to a 75 liter scale. But each production run that we do gives us sufficient virus to treat five patients. Because this is an enormous dose. This is sufficient virus to vaccinate 10 million people. My if gosh. you do the dose <laughs> conversion. So, um, so manufacturing is challenging, and, that, and that's really what, um, what puts the, um, the time frame on this study. Because, you know, clearly the, the, the media coverage has, um, has really attracted a lot of interest, and so I think there are many people who would like to be participants in the study, yeah. So, um, so that's the primary path, but there are other things that we're doing. We, we are obviously concerned for those patients who, have no, uh, who do have anti-measles antibodies. Um, and so we've discovered in our preclinical model that if we use cells as carriers of the virus, if we take cells from the body, we infect them with virus, and then we deliver the virus inside the cells, even though the, the animals have antibody, the virus can reach the target and destroy the tumor cells. So, and it's mesenchymal stem cells that we're interested in using for that because they're particularly effective. We're working with Dr. Barlogi at the University of Arkansas to get a study going in which we'll combine the virus with cyclophosphamide. The hope there is that we'll be able to achieve a similar outcome with lower doses of virus. So it's a sort of dose sparing effect. The virus plus radioactive iodine 
is something that, again, we've shown is effective in our preclinical studies because this virus contains a gene that allows virus-infected cells to concentrate radioactive iodine. And thyroid cancer has long, thyroid cancer also expresses this protein. That's, we stole the idea from thyroid cancer. And you can actually treat metastatic thyroid cancer with radioactive yes. iodine. Right. So we, we call this radiovirotherapy, where you deliver the virus and then you chase it with radioactive iodine. So that's a future study. And of course, we're, we're looking at other viruses because there are 3,500 or so viruses out there to choose between. So I think, you know, this, this will <laughs> become a new... Yes, nice. this will become a new <laughs> modality. Quite busy, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and this virus, the Sicular Stomatitis virus, that we are, are planning to test clinically, it's shown great activity in preclinical models. And by and large, people with myeloma have no immunity to this virus. It naturally causes a blistering disease in cattle in the Central America and Southern United States. Many humans have been infected. They typically get a flu-like illness. But again, we've, we've modified that virus to make it safer. And we put the NIST gene in so we can, uh, we can image. So that's the future of, of this right. activity. So, so obviously, congratulations. I mean, this is, this is a huge achievement to have uh, studied the efficacy and the safety. And I know it's been a huge challenge to, to work with the NIH to get the uh, approvals to go ahead and to, and to really show that this uh, works well. Uh, I think so uh, very, very amazing. So, so what's the reaction of you guys to this? What, what, what do you think? Who, who wants to go first? I can't help but be excited for you. Uh, <laughs> Russell Redemption at hand. Um, you know, uh, he's been working on, he's humble about it, but he's been working on this for a decade or yes. more, really. I mean, when you talked about the viruses in the 50s, I wondered if you were going to say you were back then. But, um, but you know, I, I think, I mean, it speaks to what we even said earlier. I mean, this is a complicated disease. We've got to come at it at all sorts of different angles if we're going to take it down and keep it down. Right. And, and this is such an intriguing angle. Um, and it's good to know we can make lots of it if we need it. Yeah. Um, so, so I think, you know, again, it's not ready for prime time. It's, it's still early on in development, but the proof of principle is so critical to moving forward yes. that this is a big milestone. So I'm, I'm excited uh, for, for sure. my patients that this may be an option for them in the future. So, Ola? Yeah, I think it's very exciting. I would like to congratulate you. It's fantastic work. Uh, I think we, I mean, we all agree that we certainly have not found an established cure for the disease. So just adding a few milligrams of the drugs we already have is probably not going to be the way forward if we really are going for the cure. We need new ways of thinking, thinking outside the box. And this is very creative. And going into those types of areas from a development perspective is very risky. It takes a lot of time and a lot of commitment and hard work. And yeah. I think just to congratulate you after, I, can, I cannot Absolutely. imagine how hard you must have worked on this, but it's just fantastic sure. to see that. So I know it's a lot of work ahead of you, but this is fantastic. So. Well, actually, it's an, it's an incredible team effort mm. at Mayo. It's, it, it, I, I can't tell you how many people and teams of people have been involved in this, you know, each one kind of managing their own area. And Angela Dispensieri is the PI yes. on this study, and she's worked very hard to keep it going. And she's the PI for the phase two as well. So, Tremendously important. And as yeah. we all know here, every time you go into these types of new areas, you're constantly being told that it is not going to work, and it's a stupid idea. And yes. you never give yeah. up, and you just keep on doing it. And here we have the results. And now everybody tell you, that's what I told you. I always liked it. Yeah, we, were, so. we were <laughs> close to giving yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Close. Oh my gosh. So Antonio, yeah, sorry. No, I, I completely agree with what has been said until now. I think it's a totally new concept and it's something that needs absolutely to keep going and to so, see. So where, some, where we can some Italian uh, patients can come to the Mayo Clinic, uh, maybe? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, th this is true. We, we're obviously in Europe and uh, it, it's true. Uh, um, and uh, you can maybe comment on this. Uh, patients want to know, uh, you know, how can, they, how can they come for this study? And one key point, uh, which uh, uh, is the absence of the, uh, of the antibody. And so uh, I think you mentioned that uh, the screening for that can be quite important to identify the patient who might be ideal to consider. Yeah, so Angela Dispensieri is putting through an IRB so that we can actually have patients send serum into the Mayo so that we can 
tell them ahead of time whether they're potentially sure. eligible or not. And, right. um, and we're very concerned to make sure that the selection process is fair because there's more demand than there are going to be places on the trial. So we have not yet worked out what that process is. is right. It may actually end up involving some kind of lottery component. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So we'll but, see. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it's just a, uh, an expression of the interest and, and uh, how impressive it is to see something completely new like this uh, have such an impact. Uh, uh, truly amazing.